comes up several times earlier in Ephesians. There was, uh, there was a group of believers in Jesus, all of whom shared a common culture, a common religious understanding uh, that went back 2,000 years. Um, but after Jesus' resurrection, one of the things that was most surprising to Jesus' followers was that people who didn't share that common, un common understanding came to believe in Jesus, to love God, to want to serve God, but they didn't, they didn't share all of that, that that had been the heritage of the Jewish people going clear back to Abraham. Uh, there was a, a cultural divide in the Christian church by the time Paul was writing to the Ephesians between those believers in Jesus whose background was Jewish and those believers in Jesus who came from other backgrounds, mostly from a kind of a common culture of the Greco-Roman world. It just strikes me that there might be a bit of an analogy right here at Presbyterian Church in Chinatown between the culture of those of us who grew up with English as, in most cases, our first language is certainly uh, becoming our primary language, uh, growing up in the United States, understanding how American culture works from the inside. And then our sisters and brothers in the Mandarin and Cantonese groups who grew up some other country, some of them in China, in Indonesia, in Southeast Asia, uh, have immigrated here and don't have quite the same cultural understanding, and in addition to that, language differences, and it's like, boy, maintaining unity across cultural divides, which was a big issue in the churches that Paul uh, knew, is still an issue today. So in verse uh, 1, he's, he's begging us to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you've been called. He's trying to bring us all together by focusing on what has God called us to be and do. So God called you to belong to Jesus Christ. God called you to belong to Jesus Christ. And if you belong to Jesus Christ, you seek to give your life to follow Jesus Christ, then you're invited, you are called to be part of God's project to show God's love and to tell God's love to the world. Stasia referred to the Katrina mission trip that some of you went on. Uh, some of you didn't go this year, went last year. Uh, there's a good and I think there were some folks who went on a different Katrina mission trip with a group of Presbyterian women a year before that, right? So how many of you here have been on one of these mission trips to help with rebuilding after Hurricane Katrina? Hold your hand way, 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 way up high. Come on, come on, get your hand up there. Show it. Yeah. So just look around. Um, showing and telling God's love. That's the project God's invited us to be on. In on. That's how he leads off. But then he says, I want you to do this, to lead this life worthy of the calling which you've been called. I want you to do it with all humility and gentleness, with patience. It's really easy for me to know I'm right, and if you have a different point of view, to know that you're wrong. Anybody else have this affliction? <laughs> and I've noticed sometimes when there are differences between the English group in this church and the other language groups in this church, we're pretty darn sure we're right and they're wrong. Humility, he says. Just lighten up a little on being so darn sure you're right. Gentleness. When you have that disagreement, you know, you're going to kind of get in each other's faces and shout, or are you going to work with gentleness to understand each other's points of view and maybe shift point of view 
a little bit. Oh yeah, and then I hate the, the third one of that threesome. Patience. You mean we have to wait? So, God, uh, Paul is concerned in writing this to the church in Ephesus, and actually maybe this letter was sort of intended to circulate among a group of churches, but whoever he's writing to, he's concerned about the church's unity across divides, and he's concerned how we deal with that. But behind that, he wants us to stay true to what God has called us to be and do. God called you and me to be part of God's grand dream for the world. Anyway, a professional football game is a happening where 50,000 spectators desperately needing exercise sit in the stands, <laughs> watching 22 men on the field desperately needing rest. <laughs> well, the Christian church is meant not to be like that. We're all to be getting exercise at serving Christ in the ways that God has called each of us, not all in the same way, uh, to be serving. In verse 13, uh, he says, why this equipping God's people for the work of ministry? Why? Until all of us come to the unity of the faith. Back to that theme of unity of being focused on uh, what we're uh, called by God to accomplish. I didn't read the original article in the Atlantic Monthly. I picked up a little quote from it in Leadership Magazine a few years ago. Uh, but some of you remember 15 years back, uh, the, the three superstar tenors doing that. Uh, they did several of those uh, superstar tenors. Uh, concerts, Jose Carreras, Placido Domingo, and Luciano Pavarotti, uh, singing together. And uh, a reporter was interviewing them about that, and uh, you know they're all very famous, and people tend to think of guys who sing opera or women who sing opera as being wanting to be number one and be the star. Uh, and somebody, this reporter interviewing, was sort of trying to get at the competitiveness between these three. And uh, Placido Domingo said, uh, you have to put all of your concentration into opening your heart to the music. You can't be rivals when you're together making music. Now God has called you and me to open our hearts to God's music to the music of God's dream that the whole world know of God's love, to the music of being a part of spreading that love in action and in word. Now, there's a strong focus in these verses on growing. We're not there yet. You aren't there yet. I'm not there yet. God is still shaping us, still teaching us. Presbyterian Church in Chinatown isn't there yet, but let our hearts be open to God's music and you and I grow into what God dreams for, for you individually, for me individually, for Presbyterian Church in Chinatown, what God dreams for the impact we can make in the community 